I hope you all enjoyed your meal. Um, yeah, I've been asked right in the in the pause before this talk by a student, um, why do I need a WAF? Because if I have a broken application, I want to fix the application, and I don't need extra software for that. And we have an OS project since 2000. I forgot. Eight, six, four, twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Well, there have been prior projects to this. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, discussion. Why we need a WAF? What should you uh, think about? Um, yeah, and we're happy to have uh, Ofer Shazov with us and Achim Hoffman. They will do the talk. Um, yeah, give them a warm applause. Thanks a lot for being with us. Enjoy. So, okay, my name is Achim Hoffman. Um, uh, I have my own company with a colleague together, and we are usually doing penetration testing and source code analysis and all these things, and one of the th things we do is uh, get the customer introduced into using a WAF if his application is not that good, so he can fix the problems right away. And for doing that, um, I'm engaged in WAF since a, since a long time, and we st started uh, a project there, but first I want to give it over to Shesa, who should introduce himself also. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, now you can hear me. Uh, my name is Ofer Shazaf. Uh, I'm a veteran OWASP uh, person. I, I've started my, the Israeli chapter in 2005, which means I'm pretty old. Uh, I used to be an application security guy. It's still my hobby, but today, as you can see, I work for HP, but for something which is not application security. What I do try to continue and do as part of the community is run the WAFEC Web Application Firewall Evaluation Criteria Project. So I, I moved from being a security researcher into doing into the bedside, doing product management, but I do try to keep in touch. Let's hope I do well. So let's start um, what, what this talk is about. Um, Doesn't work? I'll be the techie. I'll help you here. Mm. Not sure. Okay. First, what is uh, WAF EC standing for? Uh, it stands for a Web Application Firewall Evaluation Criteria. And the project was originally started um, <coughs> at the WASC, like the Americans pronounce it, or WASC, which is the Web Application Security Consortium. And uh, the project about the WAF evaluation criteria started in spring, around spring in 2005, and was a follow up of maybe some of you know the uh, was TC, the Web Application uh, Security Threat Classification. So it was initially run by the same persons, and the, the, the original uh, author and maintainer invited people to contribute to the new project of the WAF EC. So it was published then really fast, roughly a, a year later. And then three years later, uh, someone made out of the document, he, he extracted all the things written in the document and made the web, web application firewall evalu evaluation criteria response matrix, very difficult word. And it was simple to use uh, an Excel sheet where you can compare uh, different vendors or products. And you can find more information on the website here. So that was where everything started. And now we are in 2013, so four years after the last change. And in 2012, or a little bit earlier, people started to, to think about how to, to renew the project. So let's first say what uh, Plus C is, it's an industry-driven project, so we have primary information from vendors, and it's a very well-organized and disciplined project management there. So that's the, the advantages of the WASP C. And you have, on the other side, um, OWASP, which is a community-driven project. Um, it has good reputation for excellence and objectivity, and it's very easy to join projects there and to particip participate on projects. So that was the, 
So then the question was, after we, did, we have seen that most of the authors on contri and contributors uh, do participate in both projects. So the question was, why not merge these, these efforts and uh, to, to bring together the advantages? So community is a voluntary work, but it's slower. That's not an advantage, but it's easy to join it. And industry is often mainly commercial interest, so that is not the part that all was bad. And so the finally we get community plus industry is an unbiased and widely accepted, hopefully. <laughs> so now to the history, 2006, we um, started with uh, the version one of the document and 2009 with the response matrix. 2010, we started the work of uh, version two because vendors and also customers asked what's happening to that project, what's happening to the document, when will we get a new one? And around 2011, the discussion starts how to merge it or to merge it anyhow. And then in 2012, the decision was made. There is a project at OWASP and it has a bit of strange name, uh, WASP OWASP WAF EC. <laughs> so don't mind, you find it on the website anyway, it's very easy. And in 2013, uh, 2013 we tried to publish the document. So <coughs> still again, why a new document? Well, there are new HTTP technologies which, which didn't come up in 2005 or six. We have new players in the market with uh, web publication firewalls and the WAFs have a, a huge amount of new functionality. Partially it's, it's really HTTP, partially, partially um, it's functionality not usually, someone would not dedicate to a WAF and all these things. And we have uh, functionalities which overlap with other technologies like authorizations or things like that. So customers still want to compare the products of the vendors. This was until 2009, roughly, most vendors prohibited to make benchmarks or things like that, or even not to prohibit benchmarks, but to, to publish the, the results. This changed a little bit in 2010, even when we talked about to merge a project. So then also in 2008, um, OVAS, uh, published the best practices web application firewalls where you can find how to, uh, what you do need to do to, to select a WAF and what you need to do to operate a WAF. So all these things together make sense to have a new document, WAF EC. And now it's my job to try to explain uh, what we are trying to do and why we are not there yet. Uh, when you introduced us, you said you, you, may, you, you referred to the presentation as a presentation about WAFs, but it's a presentation about WAFIC. And those two areas often are mixed because it's a, pro, it's a project about WAFs. Uh, uh, and the discussion go both ways. Uh, this time we decided, it's a short time frame, to focus on WAFIC and its challenges. It would apply, I will talk about WAFs a bit, but uh, I'll try to talk about the challenges of WAFIC, not of WAFs. They do coincide. I did have uh, a long session in RSA in San Francisco earlier this year when I was discussing with people round table uh, WAFs. It started with WAFIC, it turned into WAFs very fast. Uh, okay. So, we plan to announce today, but we don't. Why? The question is why? What are the challenges? Why it didn't happen? Now, there are two groups of challenges. One of them, which if you are active within OWASP, you know all about, is that projects with volunteers are hard to do. Uh, people don't have time. Specifically here, my experience is that an OWASP project works if the leader invests tons of time and do 80% of the work. And I started well and I I stopped around March due to personal career issues, which I thought would be resolved by now, but are not. So it's because of me. That's the start. 
Uh, but it's not just because of me, because the challenge with community projects is that uh, it's hard to make people work around about them. And you know all that. I don't want to talk more about that. The other challenge is that evaluation criteria are hard. It's not easy to create a document that everyone agrees on and that's really useful for evaluating uh, solutions. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, going back to the question about why WAFs, one of the challenges we do have, and I didn't have a slide on it here, so I'll mention it here, is we are all WAF people. I mean, both of us are not commercial WAF vendors. Uh, Achim is, is, is implementing WAFs. Uh, I just, because I left and went to do other things. Uh, a lot of the other computers are WAF vendors. Uh, we are hooked on WAFs. We know, we think they are good. And one of the challenges in the document, and it also has, uh, we need to solve it, is how to address other options which are not a WAF. How to relate to the, it's not about selecting a WAF, but it's about the information we need to provide. So some challenges. First of all, you put WAF to protect web applications. How do you quantify, how you, do you uh, 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 verify that the WAF does its work well? So we found out that there are two ways to do that. One of them is by protection methods. Actually, WAFIC version one was all about protection methods. A list of things that a WAF should do. For example, positive security. Let's limit the input of parameters to up to 10 characters. And then, because it's hard to do that, let's have learning that enables, you to, that enables the WAF to learn typical traffic and set the rules manually. And then let's have signatures, and that's, then let's have complex signatures, and then let's have signatures or rules that are kept in sessions between different HTTP requests. All these are techniques. Um, some other techniques that sort of came around in the last few years are cookie signing, uh, which is great, but then you have to, why do I need it? Is it the only way to do something? Does it really protect? It's, 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 those are just technologies. Challenge response, which is the technology in which a WAF adds to the outbound response, HTTP response, some JavaScript is that forces the client to, a human to respond, sort of captcha-like technology or fingerprinting of the client, which can be very useful uh, for some session-based attacks. Um, IP reputation is often bundled with WAF today. I mean, if it's a bad guy in the first place, why bother? Just block. So all those are techniques. Uh, they are useful, they are needed, but they don't correlate immediately to attacks, to what you really want to block. The other thing is that it's very, very open to uh, exploit by vendors, because uh, vendors will put in the document, you need to, do, to have cookie signing. And then everybody who doesn't have cookie signing doesn't fulfill WAFIC. But do you really need cookie signing? Is there, it's not bad, but is there another way to get the same results? So the other method would be to measure protect, protection effectiveness. This is the holy grail. That's what the FAF should do. But it's hard to get there. Why it's hard to get there? First of all, how do you define effectiveness? Okay, 90% of the attacks? 95% of the attacks? And then it's very, very hard to measure and bench benchmark. Uh, if you are in the security field, you know that in most uh, active protection technologies, uh, uh, verifying that the uh, technology actually delivers is hard because if you create a fixed test that the product has to uh, protect against, uh, it, it's very easy to make the solution specifically for the test. Uh, I, I had very bad experience with that. Uh, in, in I, I used to, uh, to run research for Fortify. Uh, and somebody did a um, comparison of scanners. He prepared uh, a, a test system and he went to the product managers for each one of the products, asked for the product, and got it. F with HP Fortify, he did not find the product manager. He got the product somewhere else. The point was that everybody else knew they were delivering a product for a test and for us, he just took an off-the-shelf product. All the others prepared a new signature update to address the specific application he was using. So they had 99% uh, success, we had 92. Uh, and go explain to customers after such a report gets out. So there is a huge challenge that, okay? On the other hand, if you don't do benchmarking, then if you just have 
do you protect from CSERF? The vendor can just do yes. <laughs> and that's a challenge I'll address a bit in a few minutes as to how we try to resolve that. Second challenge, criteria. This is sort of uh, uh, general. Uh, it's very, very, very big problem with, problem is, Americans never say problem, it's an issue. It's, an <laughs> it's a very big issue with WAFEC 1. Uh, it's a list of criteria. Uh, but if it's just a list of criteria, each, each criteria has the same uh, weight. It means that protecting for SQL injection is just as important as having TCP-based syslog support. And if you don't have the last one, then you're out of the game. Uh, so criteria are not born the same. They don't have the same weight. Some of them, sorry. Some of them are uh, mandatory. You need to protect from SQL injection. Even that, it's a very broad term. I mean, there are a lot of sub attacks, uh, signatures, specific uh, attack vectors. Uh, some of them are uh, customer specific. Some customer would need them, and another would not need them. Deployment methods are a good example. Some there are organizations who want uh, uh, um, router-based solutions, so they route traffic through it. Others want bridge-like solution where uh, uh, the WAF is uh, is on the traffic itself. Um, application support. Some organizations use more advanced uh, web techniques, uh, so they need more advanced uh, capabilities in terms of address addressing those. Something that was a very big concern for a long time. I hope that it's vanishing would be Flash. Flash applications requires the WAF to understand Flash. So that's sort of important, but to some. And then there are those that are just, you know, important, but to a lesser extent. Providing weights for requirements is very hard and very speculative. It, it's something that everybody would do differently. And it's a, an area that's very hard to get into. The next one uh, is boundaries. Where does a WAF end? Um, Protecting from an SQL injection in real time is easy. Okay, then you get to attacks, which you don't know if a WAF is the tool for, for example, automation. Is protecting against screen scraping, against somebody copying your website, something a WAF should do? Or is it an extra feature that's nice to have? That's not easy to, to answer. And then there are security features which are not about a web application attacks, such as single sign-on. It's in the same location in the network. It's very reasonable to put it there. It's a valuable feature to a WAF uh, customer, even if it's not part of the core WAF. But it's hard to put it as a WAF requirement. And then there are things that are just in the same place, but have no security uh, uh, importance. For example, SSL offloading. You have to do analysis of traffic. You have to open the SSL. You can do SSL offloading at the same time as well. Makes sense. It's an advantage of a product. It's not about application security. So all those are really hard to, to resolve. What did we do? What is our solution? And that's sort of what did we do with WAFIC 2. So we, I, the one thing I did invest a lot of time in was creating a structure that tries to address those concerns. So first of all, we have core requirements. Core requirements are things that a WAF should have. Not everybody needs all of them, but they are part of a WAF. It's about security. The way we solved the security uh, dilemma of how to measure security was uh, in two chapters. One of them is a list of attacks. So C-Surf, yes. But I said that's bad. So what we did was that instead of a list of just specifying for each attack if you protect from or not, you need to specify what are your methods for protecting from this attack. So this would be a list of methods. The methods are discussed in, this, in the next chapter. The reason being that just the name of a method that is not important. We, you do need to set criteria for the different protection methods. Because when you say signatures, uh, there are a lot of questions about how good are your signatures or your signature technology. For example, it might be regular expressions or just fixed strings. A huge difference. How often is it updated? Is it updated regularly or not? Okay. So, uh, uh, so the combination of the two chapters, one of them do address the actual uh, require uh, the actual attacks, 
and then tell, tell us how you do that is our solution to uh, security. There is still, I'll get to it later, the question of how to really benchmark it beyond uh, the vendor uh, proclamations. Then we have suitability for the customer environment, which is all the requirements about supporting networking, supporting applications that you protect, Flash, for example, uh, etc., etc. And then supporting features. Supporting features would be the things that every IT system needs, including WAFs. Good reporting, okay, centralized management, um, um, failover, uh, stuff like that. Internal security, security in the WAF itself is very important as well. So this would be the core requirement. Then we added extrinsic requirement because uh, we thought that it would, it's very important to address the things that you may want with a WAF even if they don't provide you with the core WAF functionality. So good example would be single sign-on or SSL offloading as I mentioned before. But not just those, those, those there are also the non-behavioral requirements, which are a challenge. For example, who sells you the WAF? What is their support? Uh, how much does it cost? I mean, you can compare a Mercedes to a uh, Renault. After all, uh, you always want a Mercedes, but it costs a bit more. So, sorry, French. Are there any French in the? Sorry. Uh, so uh, those are the stringent requirements. Each one of those has a requirement number, and has a specific guideline as to how to answer it. So what was missing from uh, WAFIC 1 and what makes it harder for us to get out of the door WAFIC 2 is that each one of those needs to be a question that has a, a, a clear way of answering. Once you have those, okay, those are the evaluation guidelines, there needs to be, and we are not there yet and probably will release whenever we release without that, and waiting for that for the next stage, how do you also help customers verify? So one, one, one use is to send it to a vendor or uh, a seller and ask them to fill in the table for you. And another would be how do I verify, which is especially important around security uh, results, performance, which is also a huge issue. A and lastly, we do want to add also waiting suggestions, but those, those would be just suggestions. One thing that I do think is important is that these structures enable you to start with a rough definition of weight. So, for example, this area usually have a long list of requirements because they are supporting. Once you decide upfront that this is just 20% of uh, your uh, decision factor, you limited the uh, weight given to each one of the, very, the tiny small requirements there, such as TCP-based syslog. So, this is a huge project. Um, we are a bit stuck. I need to admit, uh, getting here, meeting Achim face to face for the first time, as well as other people in the room who are part of the project, is a good way to restart. And everybody who wants to join, it's www.wafec.org. Your my email address is there, uh, and we love you to help us uh, get it out of the door so it's useful to anyone who's going to use the WAF. Thank you. Now it's unmuted. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for being absolutely on time. So we have time for questions left. The main goal in the lecture, be on time. Be in time. Yeah, and obviously no WAF yes or no questions. <laughs> yeah. For the videos it's important. So the plan format of the document will be an Excel sheet again or is it a, a a Word document accompanied with, or is it? It's an open office document. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it, it always was and will be a Word document. The Excel spreadsheet was, uh, you asked who did it, I did it in 2009. The Excel sp spreadsheet uh, would be uh, uh, a, an outcome of the Word document, making it easier to answer. So it would be, again, a response matrix. But the document, and, and we do plan to have a lot more textual explanation, not just hints. Another thing that I want to have, but takes time, and therefore we are not there yet. Hi. Um, I like the waiting stuff. Um, 
and the waiting suggestions and my suggestion to waiting suggestions would actually be that the customer goes and looks at their they look at their application and they kind of define what their application's needs are from a security point of view and then the weights are basically automatically adjusted to what the buff has actually to do because if it's you know they uh, uh I completely agree. That's why I, I was struggling and I saying suggestions in the first place. And it's not, it's, it would never be, it's an appendix, it would never be part of WAFEC saying yeah, exactly. SQL injection 2%. Yeah, but uh, at least it gives the, the customer, or the potential customer, a guideline to what it's enough for him or what, what yeah. he really needs, really. And usually from, from our experience, they don't know. They really don't know. They come to you and ask, so what do I need? Can you scan my application? Can you find out what we should do actually can you help me deploy a, a project and find out if it's enough he can help and you deploy the project I, I know i know this is the, the whole thing but uh, sometimes they come to us as a vendor and say you should actually prove to us that we need it so do it and we don't so we say go away go to Achim. yeah but oh this is gonna cost money <laughs> oh <laughs> really <laughs> Thank you. Any, anyone else? We, end, we have time for more questions. We are here. Okay. We love you to join. Thank you. Thanks.